What's going on? My name's Jay, and today I'm going to walk you through some color grading basics in DaVinci Resolve 16. Let's take a look. Last week, a couple weeks ago, I don't remember, I put out a video about how the word cinematic is really, really overused, but there's also some ways that you can make your footage at least look a little bit more like your favorite movie, your favorite film. And my very first tip was to color correct and color grade your footage because that really is super, super important if you want high quality video. It's gonna make a world of difference. It's really, it's just gonna step up your game. Why wouldn't you wanna do that? And one of the things that I absolutely love about DaVinci Resolve is it makes the whole color grading and color correcting workflow really intuitive, really easy. So today we're actually going to walk through that entire workflow in the color page in DaVinci Resolve. But first, I got to clarify a couple things. First, you've probably noticed that I've used the terms color correcting and color grading in this video so far, and that's because they are two separate things. A lot of people use them interchangeably, but they're very, very different. Color correcting is all about making your footage look like it would if you were looking at it with your naked eye. So you're making sure that your blacks are black, your whites are white, your grays are gray, and all the colors are correct. Color grading, on the other hand, is where we get creative. This is where we actually get the look that we want for our video. And people do that in different ways. Some people use LUTs, some people do it manually. There's just, it don't, there is no right or wrong way, but there is kind of an order of operations to things, starting with color correcting. So we're gonna jump into DaVinci Resolve and take a look at how to do that right now. Yo, oh, also before I forget, stick around to the end of this video because I'm gonna show you a super, super cool way to do a really quick color grade that will take almost no time at all. All right, let's jump into DaVinci. All right, we're in the color page in DaVinci Resolve. I've got a few clips already lined up and ready to go. These are actually some Blackmagic RAW files that I found on the internet. They were free to download so I could practice color grading. If you are interested in getting your hands on these, I'll leave a link in the description. Now let's take a quick tour of the color page so we know what we're working with. We've got our gallery over here, which if we ever grab any stills, from our playback monitor, we can go ahead and save them there. Next to that, we've got our LUTs, our lookup tables. These are all of our, well, basically Instagram filters for our video if you want a really dumbed down description of them. And uh, you can see I've got a ton of them. A lot of them I added, but there were quite a few that actually came with DaVinci Resolve. Next to that, we've got our media pool where we can see all of the clips that are in our project. And then if I click this timeline button, we can see a bird's eye view of our entire timeline. Let's go ahead and turn that off because I never ever use that. And then if we need more space for our playback monitor or for our nodes, I can actually turn all of that off. And then all I'll have up here is playback monitor and nodes. Moving all the way over to the right, I can click this to toggle my clips on and off. I can click this to toggle my nodes on and off. I can open my effects menu here. And if I want a close up look at all of my footage, I can go ahead and click Lightbox. And then there you go. You've got all of the grabs from your footage. Let's go ahead and turn that off. Below all of that, we've got our playback monitor, which is where we're going to see the results of all of our hard work and our nodes, which is where we're going to put all of our corrections. And if you're coming over from Premiere Pro, nodes are basically like adjustment layers, but with a much more intuitive workflow. It's kind of like in my Fusion tutorial that I did last week. It's basically a pipeline. You can see the order in which you've done things really, really easily. Below that, we've got our clips, which we can, like I said, toggle on and off if we want, but I usually like keeping them on so I can switch between them quickly. And then below our clips, we've got a lot of cool tools. We've got our camera raw menu where you can play around with the settings for all of your raw footage. We've got the color match menu where you can choose whatever color card you're using if you're using one and go ahead and do your color matching that way. We've got our wheels, which also includes primaries bars. And we got primaries wheels and log wheels. And then we've got our RGB mixer and our motion effects. We're not gonna to be touching motion effects or RGB mixer in this. We're actually pretty much only gonna be dealing 
with the color wheels. Next to that, we've got a whole bunch of tools like curves and qualifiers, windows, you can do motion tracking, blur and sharpening. You can change your key output of any one of your nodes. It's just a whole bunch of stuff over here. And then to the right of all that are our scopes. And the only ones we really need to pay attention to for this video are our parade, our waveform, and our vector scope. And then if you wanna do a little bit more advanced color grading and you need to keyframe some correctors, you can do that by clicking on keyframes and here's all of your keyframes. We're not gonna be doing that today though. We're just gonna be messing around with the scopes. All right, so like I said, you wanna do your color correcting before you do your color grading. And there is an order of operations that I like to use that kind of keeps things nice and easy, nice and straightforward. I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. The first thing that we're gonna do is adjust our luminance. You can see that this video clip is very flat. It is raw footage, like I said, so it's very flat, no contrast, very little saturation, and we need to do a lot of work with this. The first thing that we're gonna do, since we are only touching luminance, is we're gonna come over to our waveform. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna click the adjustments for the waveform. We're gonna change the waveform from RGB to Y. So that way we're not seeing any of the colors, we're only seeing our luminance. Next thing we're gonna do is come up to our nodes and we wanna label our nodes so we know what we're doing. So let's go ahead and right click on that. I'm gonna hit node label and hit luminance. And what we're going to do is we're going to come down to our color wheels. You can also do this in curves, but I like doing it in color wheels. And if we look at our color wheels, you can see there's a couple things going on. First, let's talk about lift, gamma, and gain. Lift basically refers to your shadows. Gamma is your midtones. Gain are your highlights. And then offset kind of creates an overall adjustment across your lift, gamma, and gain. Now you'll also see that we've got our color adjustments where we can change the color of our shadows, our midtones, and our highlights, or put an overall cast over our image. And I'm gonna just, for an example, show you because I wanna show you that the farther you push these out, the more saturated your image is gonna be with that color. So if we take a look at offset, we're gonna just go ahead and drag that towards red and we're just gonna push it out and you can see the farther I push it out, the more saturated that red gets. And then if you go too far and you just need to reset and start over, go ahead and double click and that'll reset everything. Below your color adjustments, you have your master wheels and these all deal with the luminance of your lift, your gamma and your gain. Below that, you'll see the values of your luminance, your reds, your greens, your blues and all of that stuff. And then below that, you'll see things like contrast, pivot, saturation, hue, luminance mix. And then if you click on the number two, you've got some more tools like temperature, tint, midtone details, color boost, shadows, that kind of stuff. So like I said, the first thing that we're going to do is adjust the luminance of this image. And if I come over to my scopes, you can see that it's a very bright image. We actually have our whites are clipping a little bit and our blacks are way, way up there. So we need to change that a little bit. What we're gonna do is we're gonna come over to our master wheels. We're gonna do the gain first. We're gonna go ahead and drag that down and you can either click and drag, which is what I'm gonna do. Or if you want some more detailed movements, you can just hover your mouse over the wheel and you can use the scroll wheel on your mouse to go up and down. And since I know this is a very bright video clip and I know that we actually have some things that are pure white, what I wanna do is I want to make sure that my bright spots are just below that 1023 line. And then we're gonna adjust our shadows, which I want to keep above the zero. I'm probably gonna drag it down to where they are just touching that line above the zero. So let's come over here to lift. We'll go ahead and drag that down. And that looks good right about there. And now if you actually look at the scope, you can see that I actually dragged my highlights down a little bit when I dragged my shadows down. So I wanna come back to the gain and I'm gonna readjust that just a little bit. And now luminance is looking pretty good. So we'll go ahead and we'll hit Alt S and add a new serial node. 
And this one we're gonna label saturation. We're actually gonna wanna go ahead and go to our vector scope. And the cool thing about the vector scope, not only can you measure your skin tones by making sure that they're along this line, but you can also measure your saturation. And I kinda wanna keep like a little bit of a barrier. Like I imagine that there's a fence where all of these boxes are and it's just going around. And when I push my colors out, when I add saturation, I don't want those colors to go outside of that fence. Now I'm gonna come over here below my wheels and I'm gonna hit saturation. And there's two things you can do. You can either click over the number and you can drag it left or right, or you can just click on the number and you can type in a value. And since this is log footage, I typically find that doing 75 is pretty good. Now you can see we've got a nice bit of saturation here, but if we look at our scope, we can see that we've got some red that is really sticking out there. We are gonna fix that a little bit later. For now, saturation is done, so we're gonna go ahead and hit Alt S again to add another node. Let's go ahead and right click, hit node label, and this is gonna be color balance. And this is where we actually balance our colors. This is where we make sure our whites are white and our blacks are black. And in order to do that, we wanna do a couple things. First, we wanna change from our vector scope to our parade, because our parade is gonna show us the balance that we have between the reds, the greens, and the blues. The next thing I wanna do is come to the color menu and I wanna right click, I wanna hit show picker RGB value, because now when I scroll over, when I run my mouse over the image, I can actually see the RGB values of whatever I put my mouse on. All right, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna mess with the whites and the blacks. We're gonna see if everything's balanced. And if I come over here to the snow, we can see, let's see, red 246, green 243, and blue 242. That actually looks pretty good. So we're gonna leave our snow alone for now. And now what we wanna do is come over, let's find something that is dark. We're gonna come down here and we have 16, 15, and 11, that's pretty good. Let's come over here to another dark spot. 40, 34, 20. Blue is a little bit low. I feel like I can drag, yeah, I can drag the blues up a little bit. So what I wanna do is come over to the primaries bars, and I'm gonna adjust the blue by putting my mouse over the blue in the lift, and I'm gonna use my middle scroll wheel just to inch that up a little bit. Let's come over here and recheck that. 38, 36, 30, that looks pretty good. It's within a couple of points. And now we've got a nice color balanced image. All right, the next thing that I wanna do is I'm gonna hit Alt S and add a new node and we're gonna label this one look. And this is where if we want, we can go ahead and we can add a more creative look. I'm gonna do a really simple one here and I'm gonna do it using the primaries wheels. Let's go ahead and go back to the wheels. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the midtones to create like kind of a, a cyan cast over everything because well, it's winter and I want everything to be colder. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm actually gonna drag the gamma towards blue and I can push that out if I want because we can adjust it later. Now you can see there's a teal cast over the entire image, but the blacks and the whites still look pretty black and white. It did They did get affected a little bit though, so we're actually gonna counteract by adding a little bit of orange into the shadows and into the highlights. And you'll see that it kind of looks like we're back to having a balanced image, but if we actually go and we make sure that our look node is selected and we hit Control D, you can see there actually has been a good amount of change done to this image. Now that is looking a little bit warm for a wintry scene. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna go to temperature and I'm just gonna cool that down a little bit. And that looks pretty good. Once again, hit Control D to deactivate that node and see where we came from. And then if you wanna see everything that we've done so far, you can go ahead and hit Alt D and that will disable all of your nodes so you can see everything that you've done so far. 
All right, now it's time to mess with the contrast a little bit. Let's go ahead and hit Alt S to add another node. I'm gonna right click, node label, contrast, hit enter. Let's go back over to our waveform. And we're just gonna go back to number one over here below the wheels. We're gonna find the contrast. We're gonna click and we're gonna drag until it looks how we want it to look. And I actually like that a lot. And then one thing that a lot of people do just to get a more realistic look, and it's something I'm gonna do right now, is desaturate the shadows, which I'm gonna do by hitting Alt S to add a new node. I'm gonna go ahead and hit node label again. I'm gonna call this LVS, Luma versus Saturation, hit enter. I'm gonna come back down to my curves. I'm gonna go to my Luma versus Saturation curve. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click all the way on the left of this curve and I'm gonna drag it all the way down and you'll see this got very, very desaturated. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click in the middle and I'm gonna drag it up to that center line. And then just to make sure that that snow is nice and white, let's go ahead and add another marker here towards the right side of the curve. And then we can drag the far right down and take some of the saturation out of the snow. Let's come back over to the contrast. I'm gonna go ahead and hit Alt S so we add a node between contrast and Luma versus saturation. And then if we go over to Midtone Details, what this is gonna do is it's gonna add contrast just to the parts of our footage that have detail. Let's go ahead. And you can see some of the detail in the snow is coming out, which is really nice. And from there, you can do things like add a vignette and all that stuff. We're not gonna get into that right now. For now, this is actually looking really, really good. I'm impressed. Now, another thing that you can do, if we click on this clip with the helicopters, which is still log, still very desaturated and very flat, let's say I wanted to make this clip look like the other clip. What I can do is I can go ahead and I can right click on the clip that I already graded and I can hit apply grade. And now you can see that the clip is already pretty much done. And then I can go ahead and I can maybe add another serial node. I can actually go back to my luminance and I can go back to my custom curves and I can drag my highlights down just a little bit so I can get more of that sky in there. I can drag the shadows down a little bit, maybe bump up those mid-tones. And that looks pretty good to me. And those are the basics of color grading, but let's say you don't wanna mess with all that. Let's say you're in a rush and you're trying to just get everything done quickly. You want your footage to look decent. It doesn't have to look perfect and all that stuff. What you can do, let's go ahead and click on this third clip of the people getting into this ski lift. You can see it's still very flat, no contrast, no saturation. And all we're gonna do is make sure this first note is selected and we're gonna hit C. Now you can see that DaVinci Resolve basically decided how this clip should look. And from there you can add nodes and you can put your color cast on there if you want. Go ahead and add some blue to the gamma and go ahead and add some red to the lift, some red to the gain. Maybe mess with that contrast just a little bit more. Click over to two, go ahead and up those mid-tone details a little bit. Come back to our grade, go ahead and drop that temperature down. And it's not perfect, but it'll do in a pinch. Now, like I said before, color correcting, color grading is a great way to make your footage look more cinematic, if you wanna call it that. If you would like some other tips on how to do that, make sure you watch this video right here. And if you enjoyed this video and you wanna learn more about video editing, camera gear, and how to make better videos, make sure you subscribe to my channel and hit that bell so you don't miss anything. Thanks for watching, thanks for hanging out, and I'll see you in the next video. Go watch it now.